This is a first video for section SDSDH. In section SDSH, we're looking at correlations and scatter plots. In this video, we're going to be looking at scatter plots. Now, when two different data variables or quantities are collected from the one source, it's possible to determine if a relationship exists between the variables. A simple method of determining the relationship between two variables, if it exists, is by constructing a scatter plot. A scatter plot can also be called a scatter graph or a scatter diagram, is a graph that is created by plotting one variable or quantity on the horizontal axis and the other on the vertical axis. Now if one variable is likely to be dependent on the other, called the dependent variable, that should be plotted on the vertical axis or the y-axis and the independent variable goes on the x-axis. The scales on the vertical and horizontal axes do not need to be the same or even use the same units. Also, the axes do not need to commence at zero. So let's look at an example here. The heights and weights of 10 students are recorded below. Construct a scatter plot for this data. Now, height and weight, you would expect that your weight would be 10 dependent <laughs> start again, would be dependent on your height, the taller you are the more you weigh. Think about a child versus an adult. Okay, So that means we're going to have height on our x-axis and we're going to have weight on our y-axis. Now when we look at the data we have to think well what are our heights going from and to? So we look scan up and down our heights and we can see that 155 looks to be the lowest height and 181 looks to be the highest. So my scale needs to go from 150 per se up to about 190. Now this little mark here is showing that I'm not going to start at zero. Okay, so what I might do is start at 150, 160, 170, 180, 190. So I've gone up by tens. On my y-axis, look at our weights. The minimum weight looks to be 41 and our maximum weight looks to be 70. So again, we don't need to start at zero if we don't want to, but it, it, you can quite easily start at zero here. So we can start at zero and go up by tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Don't make your graph so tiny that you can't see what's going on. Now let's plot. So 167 and 52. So when I'm going on my X scale, that's 162, 4, 6, 8, 70. So I've got 167, 162, 164, 166. So 167 must be in here and I want to go up to 52. So this is 50. Sorry about that. So 167, 152 will be about there. And put a dot or a cross, whatever works for you. So then look at your next value, which is 178. So that's going to be here, and we go up to 63, and 63 is going to be about there. Continue doing that for all your data. Okay, so that's my resulting scatter plot. I would also need a heading. So remember to put your heading in. I've also already labeled my axes. I might also label my units. So height is in centimeters, and weight is in kilograms, and then I'll add a, a title. So I have scatter plot of weight versus height. Here's another one. Um, for one week, week, the midday temperature and the number of hot drinks sold were recorded. Construct a scatter plot for this data. Well, when you're looking at the independent variable and the dependent variable, you would expect your number of hot drinks would be dependent on the temperature. So my number of hot drinks I'm going to put on my y-axis and my temperature is going to be on my x-axis. So go ahead and have a go at this one yourself. So here you can see I've labelled my axes, and I've also put in a title, and I've put in my scale. Now I'm going to plot my points. So you can see my scatter plot here, and it kind of makes sense. What it's saying is the lower the temperature, the more hot drinks that were sold. What now? Exercise SDSD H1 in the textbook.